Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so today I'm just going to be talking to you about some of my favorite topics in math. Uh, I'm Aporva, I'm 17, and I'm from San Jose, California. Uh, and the reason I'm talking to you all today is because of my experience in math research as a writer and co-author of five papers alongside world-renowned mathematicians. For my work, I was named a 2021 Davidson Fellows Laureate, receiving a $50,000 scholarship, a 2020, uh, 2020 Global Child Prodigy, a World Science Scholar, and winner of the Spirit of Ramanujan Fellowship. When I was 12, I founded my own art gallery as an online platform to raise funds for underserved children and to advocate for social reform. So far, I've raised over $45,000 in total for all sorts of causes, and I received the 2021 Diana Award for my global service, which was a huge honor. Uh, we're going to start off with this light activity where I show you some math and magic. What we're going to start off by doing is you're going to give me random two-digit numbers, and then I'm going to square them, and then we'll go from there. And so now what we're gonna do is I need, and I guess I can have Sarah do this with me mm -hmm. if that's okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so let's just take, let's take 729. All right. Could you multiply this uh, by a random four digit number? Don't tell me anything about it. And okay. you can just use a calculator. Yeah, I will use a calculator. Okay. And so how many digits is your answer? Six. Six. So what you're going to do is you're gonna tell me five of those digits in any order you want, like scramble it up, um, right. but you're gonna leave one of those digits, like not, you're not gonna tell me it. And don't make it zero, cause that makes it a little boring. So just leave off one of those digits and tell me all the other five in any order. Okay. One, all right. seven. And then let me write these down. Okay. So I'll write them bigger. One, seven, seven. nine, mm -hmm. eight, Yep. and three. Okay, is the last digit eight? It is. And so I'm sure a lot of you already know this trick, but the special thing, the reason I chose this number for Sarah to multiply is it's the only one out of these three numbers that has um, a factor of nine or has a factor of three. And the special thing about numbers that are divisible by three is that if you add up all the digits, they will be a number that is also divisible by three. For our next wonder, I need to tell you a quick story. The other day, and I'll save you the details of how, but I was trapped in the Pinocchio movie and I needed a way to get out. I didn't really have the patience to play through the movie, so I just had to find some way to break the system. So I quickly scribbled a couple words on the paper and I handed it to Pinocchio. He stopped and then he read it out loud. My nose will grow right now. Pinocchio's nose suddenly started to tremble as it tried to figure out what to do. Is Pinocchio lying? Is he telling the truth? His nose started to grow, then it shrank, and it kept fluctuating in length, and everything around us began to shake. Then everything went still. I had successfully escaped the simulation with Pinocchio. But how did I break him exactly? I discovered that these contradicting and confusing statements, like my nose will grow now, are part of something known as the liar's paradox one of the most famous, everlasting, and debated paradoxes in logic. Now, for the next wonder, what are we gonna talk about next? Nothing. We will be discussing the history of the number zero. Uh, so now using the, no the term number is a little bit uh, getting ahead of ourselves because zero first came into play as a placeholder. The first known appearance of this idea of zero was in Mesopotamia around 5,000 years ago. The Sumerians used a counting system for practicality to count their goods and to keep track of things like wild horses and cattle. In writing, scribes used spaces to denote the absence of a number in a place, hence the term placeholder. So naturally, this idea found its way into the Babylonian Empire around 4,000 years ago, and they were the first to really use a symbol instead of a space to indicate this absence, which you can see here on the left. And so we are gonna be talking about spherical geometry. I am personally not the fastest runner, so I want to know the shortest possible distance required to run the world. In particular, given any two points on the globe, which we assume is a perfect sphere for simplicity, I need to know what the shortest path between them is so that I don't have to run for too long. As you can probably guess, we are not the first people to ask this question. It's an important concept in navigation and exploration. It's how you take flights to places and it lies in the area of spherical geometry, 
which has now been studied for thousands of years. Spherical geometry is pretty much what it sounds like, the geometry of the two-dimensional surface of a sphere. For our next topic, it is time for our souls to spiral in frozen fractals all around, as Elsa sings Let It Go. And particularly, we are going to take a look at fractals. So it's very fitting that we have to go back in time to look at the first visualization of a famous fractal. In 1980, and I'll just keep going, uh, the mathematician Benoit B. Mandelbrot caught the first glimpse of what would later be known as the Mandelbrot set, a celebrity in the world of fractals. And if I'd seen it, I might've thought it was a computer virus, even though it's beautiful. And it kind of is in a way. It's been called the ultimate computer virus because of the sheer computational power it requires. And Mandelbrot actually introduced the term fractal in 1975, coming from the Latin word fractus, meaning broken or irregular. 